Censorship is a hot topic around the world, and video games are liable for all sorts of ethical discourse. People constantly debate about what classifies content as harmful or immoral. No one can really agree 100% on what art of storytelling forms should be permitted. But one thing is guaranteed when it comes to games though, fans always find a way to play their favorites. Lawmakers and disciplinarians will keep trying to take controversial games away from the public, but we will always be here to fight for the games we feel the right to play. So, from nationwide to region specific, today we are going to explore 13 games you didn't know were banned in certain countries. First, we are taking a look at Valkyrie Drive Bikuni. Valkyrie Drive has been banned in a surprising amount of countries, both conservative and liberal. In Iran, Kenya, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates, it was banned in physical format because it was glorifying homosexual and immoral values, as well as excessive sexual content. In Germany, it was banned for sexual content involving characters who might be underage. In Australia, depictions of sexual activity are not permitted unless labeled with an R18 plus rating, which is understandable. And they take it a step further with banning anything sexually violent that's not justified or has any relation to incentives and rewards. New Zealand banned it for a similar reason to the other more liberal countries, depicting minors in a sexual context, but they also banned the game for promoting incestuous relationships. In a game as unique as this one, Valkyrie Drive was never going to have an easy time staying banned free throughout the continent, but it got smacked with a ban nearly as much as some of the other more expected games on this list. Next, we are taking a look at Pokemon banned in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has had a disapproving attitude towards Pokemon for almost 20 years. In 2001, the Pokemon card game was ruled as a form of gambling, and all Pokemon-related products were banned. Not only did the religious leaders and government find the game too similar to gambling, they also thought it went against the teachings of Islam by including forms of evolution and polytheistic support and symbolism. The ban was ignored on and off throughout the years, but was sparked back into ignition in 2016 when Pokemon Go was released. Players were managing to illegally obtain the game, and when this got reported to the government by the public, the ban was revived. How would you feel if your favorite game was banned, and you were told you could never play it again? What would you do? Okay, so from one Pokemon to the next, we are now taking a look at Pokemon Go in Iran. Pokemon Go has been banned or at least actively disdained by the government in a handful of places. Saudi Arabia, as I just mentioned, for being too addictive and sacrilegious. Turkey, for disrespecting the holiness of mosques where people were ending up catching Pokemon or stopping in at a Pokestop for items instead of praying. Egypt has even made the game illegal for going against the religions of the country and being compared to illegally consuming alcohol and causing an unwarranted distraction to hardworking citizens. But there is one place where the game was banned for a more dangerous reason. Iran banned Pokemon Go for civil security reasons the government has remained mostly vague about. The game developers can't program the game to know when an area is deemed unsafe to enter, and citizens were at a high risk of walking onto active battlefields to catch their Pokemon or access Pokestops. Other countries have banned the game in certain places, such as areas of protected religious practices, military zones of any kind, and sanctuaries or spaces of delicate memories, such as past concentration camp locations. You would think people could use common sense not to put themselves in danger while playing the game, but I know I've done some questionable things for Eevee candies before. Now we head to Germany for Medal of Honor Heroes 2. Germany has its fair share of banned or revised games. The Call of Duty franchise almost as a whole, Dying Light, Left 4 Dead, and its sequel, the Mortal Kombat franchise, and even X-Men Origins. Most games are limited for their excessive gory violence or violence with incentives or rewards, but one game in particular has an interesting reason behind its ban, Medal of Honor Heroes 2. I remember my brother and I playing this game back in the day, and games like that always felt cool to us. Being from the US, we felt like the good guys, and I never contemplated how that might impact people in other countries. Now, the game wasn't technically banned for any political reason, but that the controls imitated the use of real-life firearms within a realistic theater of war. I find that interesting when there are so many games, even in that time frame, that had realistic portrayals of firearms. Maybe we'll never know whether history played a role in the game's ban or not. Next up is Half-Life and Mass Effect in Singapore. After being out for more than a year, Half-Life was banned because of violence. Any game that's banned after a fan base has already been solidified is asking for a riot. And that's what Singapore got. The ban was met with a massive upheaval from fans and retailers who loved and relied on the game. 
They worked together to petition the game back into the market. After only a week, the game was released from its ban due to how it would negatively affect the LAN gaming community and retail market. I can't say my reaction would be any different. I would throw up some poster board in March for any of the Half-Life games, wouldn't you? Mass Effect was also originally banned for having the potential for an alien homosexual content. One of the characters is known as an Asari, and the race has technically only one gender. It could be argued that the character be considered something other than female, but the option for two individuals that present themselves as female to be in a sexual relationship was too much for Singapore to handle at the time. Obviously met with backlash, the ban was lifted and the game was given an M18 rating. Just like Mass Effect and Half-Life, all games banned by Singapore have later been released with a rating of M18. Now we head to Malaysia for Dante's Inferno. Malaysia has strict guidelines for video game content, impactful violence, sexual content, nudity, depictions of torture or acts of cruelty, as well as anything that could be considered anti-Muslim. The country went as far as blocking the entire Steam store after Fight of Gods was found to have religious deities fighting. The store was only blocked for a day after Valve agreed to block Fight of Gods from the store in Malaysia. Older games haven't been granted the same access and have been banned since release. One classic game the Malaysian audience never got a chance to enjoy was Dante's Inferno. The Malaysian Islamic organization ruled it unsuitable due to depictions of sexual content, hellscapes, visions, and cruelty that went against Islamic law. Next up is Defense of the Ancients in the Philippines. The Philippines has had a tricky history with its video gaming industry. Back in 1981, inspired by worried parents complaining about space invaders and asteroids misguiding their children, all video games, consoles, arcade games, and even pinball machines and slot machines were treated as a potential threat to the public and entirely outlawed. Everyone was given two weeks to destroy all gaming property or turn them into the authorities, and anyone who broke this decree faced at least $600 in fines or up to one year in prison. The law was widely disregarded by the public and unenforced by the authorities and was ultimately lifted in 1986 through the 1986 People Power Revolution. I love seeing people fight for their rights to game, and no other game has been banned since 1986 other than Defense of the Ancients in one particular region in the Philippines, and for good reason. There were complaints from citizens in Cavite that the game was causing unlawful behavior in minors and eventually led to two murders involving minors in the area that resulted from fights over the game. Now we go to South Korea for Danganronpa V3, Killing Harmony. South Korea has been well known for having an amazing but also tightly regulated gaming environment, but the country has an outright banned very many games. As mentioned through the video, sometimes video games can cause heated fights that can result in dire consequences, but sometimes people who are already inspired to do terrible things get a video game banned for the rest of the community. And this happened in South Korea when a 17-year-old girl was arrested for the alleged murder and dismemberment of an 8-year-old child. The girl was reported to have been disturbed already, and the the country decided against releasing a game about high school students killing each other. The country refused to give the game a rating, and unrated games receive an instant ban and aren't allowed to circulate, which is quite fair in my opinion. Now we look at Homefront in North and South Korea. North Korea already bans all foreign video games despite their content, and almost no games are developed in the country. The country doesn't have to give explanations for why a game isn't allowed other than coming from a different country, but Homefront was banned in North Korea for its portrayal of a unified Greater Korean Republic under the rule of Kim Jong-un. North Korea was shown as aggressively militaristic and tyrannical. The game is set in 2027, and sitting here in 2020 with the current political climate isn't making me feel great. Ironically, the game is also banned in South Korea for its portrayal of a unified Korea. Understandably, the South couldn't be supportive of the game unless it wanted a dangerous political scandal, but the North and South being unified in an opinion of a game about their dystopian unification is comical. Call of Duty Modern Warfare in Russia Last year's epic war game had an interesting journey in Russia. Russia technically hasn't banned any game regardless of its content due to freedom of speech being promised in the constitution of Russia. But news was released last year incorrectly reporting that the game had been banned in Russia when in fact no official ban had been placed. The game was pulled from the PlayStation Store in Russia, and while there hasn't been a definite statement from officials, the Russian media had negative reviews about the game's campaign that involved volunteers operating in the series 
Syrian opposition and Turkish-occupied Syria, it looks like Sony announced that the game wouldn't be selling on the PlayStation Store in Russia to save any further controversy. The UK is pretty free from censorship, only divvying out bans in response to excessive content. Games need to be revised and given appropriate age ratings to be allowed in the country, much like most other more liberal countries really. But one game I was not expecting to see, and haven't seen on any other banning lists even in more conservative countries, was The Punisher. It was already edited in the States, but was censored even more heavily to be released in the UK. Particularly the interrogation scenes were too graphic, and edited even further before it received its 18 plus rating and no longer disallowed. None of the games that have been previously banned are still banned in the UK though. Next, we're talking about Mercenaries 2, World in Flames in Venezuela. In 2009, the government announced a ban on any and all violent video games, in an attempt to help curb any inspirations citizens might have to commit violent acts. Venezuela has one of the highest homicide rates in the world. The law was influenced by studies done in the US and Japan that saw a correlation between games with violent themes and aggressive behavior in children. The main ban was for games where the objective is shooting people, but the law was vague and left room for games like Super Smash Bros to fall beneath the ban hammer as well. It is illegal to sell, rent, manufacture, distribute, and yes, use violent video games. And the punishment for selling or distributing three to five years in prison is actually more than the punishment for selling real guns to children one to five years. Explain that to me. While the lawmakers and current president at the time, Chavez, had a distaste for poisonous video games and pushed part of the blame for their violent society on them, the catalyst for the law was Mercenaries 2, World in Flames. I guess suffice it to say the game is permanently banned, and because of its controversial depictions of Venezuela and its government, all other violent video games are banned as well. As far as we're able to tell, actual Venezuelan citizens seem mostly unaffected by the ban. Stores still sell games and people still find a way to play, but the knowledge and threat of repercussions from indulging in their digital worlds is always present. So, most of the games I've mentioned kind of make sense to have faced restrictions, but should anyone be allowed to censor what we expose ourselves to? When it comes to minors, people with sensitivities, or people who need a little guidance, it's perfectly understandable to be careful about what we share. Most people buying their own video games are adults who can make their own decisions. However, ratings have their place and people should respect them. So that wraps up the video. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe if you enjoy the content.